Welcome to the Insurance Guy podcast. From sales to insurance advice, we discuss ways to protect your business and grow it. Make sure to like and share this podcast. And don't forget to check us out at theinsurers.ca for all your business insurance needs. And here's your host, Mr. On. Hey, Facebook family. Really happy to have a really, really successful individual with me today. And uh, Mr. Sabir Chova. I hope I got your last name right. <laughs> That's very cool. Thank you. It's awesome, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me today. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, hey, thanks so much for your time. So, you know, he is a very successful individual. He is a broker, um, a broker owner at Century 21 Innovative Realty, as well as he's a co author of a very successful book, Empowering Women to Succeed as well as he's a motivational speaker to new sales agents. So today we'll be picking his mind and seeing the difficulties that new sales agents face, how to overcome them and overcome them, and what are the mindsets that you need to be successful. So, you know, you you know you and I both know that in real estate today it seems like the new common misconception is that you just have to get the license mm-hmm. and you'll be on the show like the you know million dollar listings and you'll be like making the big bucks and that's what it seems like every every family member has like five realtors within them <laughs> within their own group <laughs> groups or something of that nature. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, on the, and, and it's true uh, that that is one of the misconceptions out there um, that a lot of people think that hey. Uh, you know, just get my license and then here I am. But real estate is is a business. It's a business, and you gotta treat it as a business. Mm. Uh, you gotta get out there and just like an entrepreneur would be, you know, starting his or her businesses. I think there's stats actually that say that a lot of realtors will give up their license in the first two years as a as a high majority of them. I think in the 60 to 70 percent when they get their license in the first 24 to 36 months, they give up their license. Why? Simply because it goes back to uh, they don't treat it as a business. They're not an entrepreneurial mind. They don't have that uh, mindset in them, right? Uh, so this particular business and real estate itself need to be treated as like any other business that is out there uh, to be successful. Because if you don't put it as a business mm-hmm. and you treat it just as a you know uh, a job, there's nothing going to happen. And, and the most difficulty that people face is that. Um, uh, you're your own boss. Right. So, you know, you gotta make sure you get up every single day, uh, Monday to Friday or Saturday, Sunday, get up there and work also. So it's every single day you gotta be up there and willingness to talk to people. And, and this is sales. Right. Like, uh, sales is talking to people. Yeah. Uh, if you're not a people person, <laughs> it's not for you. Uh, if you can't go out there and, uh, I, I Coach a lot of realtors, right. a lot of training. I tell my realtors that are out there that you gotta get out there and knock on doors. Right. And there's no magic pill. Yeah. You gotta get out there and knock on doors. You gotta knock on doors. You gotta pick up the phone and ask for business. You gotta get out there and hustle for business. Right. Otherwise, oh, well, that's not gonna happen. So, how many brokers have you do you currently have? We have actually uh, in our uh, we have three offices. Uh, we have this is a Toronto office right there, uh, which is our office. We and then we have an office in the side, and we have an office in HS. So there's three offices in total. We have about 280 realtors working for Century 21 Innovative Realty Inc. And we are number seven within Century 21 Canada. Amazing. So as a brokerage uh, with our performance, we're number seven, and globally within Century 21, we are number 15. That's amazing. So this exactly goes back to yeah, no, thank you very much. You know, it goes back to the success of our realtors, success of our brokerage, and it certainly goes back to the management team, myself and my uh, other partners and my management team that we have that we grow right. in the business. Uh, so that goes back to activity, performance of our realtors out there. So when I'm sure you probably get a lot of resumes, and you're not just picking, you're not just taking the resumes and bringing them on board. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you're probably looking for certain skill sets that obviously, maybe not the technical portion, or they might. There's probably something specific you're looking for mm-hmm. during a, during a, you know before you bring somebody on board. What's what do you look for? Well, willingness to change first of all, because you may be in a certain industry or you may have a full time job somewhere else. Are you willingness to put in the effort into this business? Mm-hmm. That's first and foremost. Okay. Second is the willingness to change. 
Uh, whatever you're doing, are you willing to change? Because this is a different business, different skill set, different sales levels of skill set. Right. Um, in the last few months, we've seen the real estate in Toronto, in particular, has changed minds, has changed uh, a huge landscape, especially with the right. Right. rules and regulations that have come in. Right. A lot of change has come into play over there. Right. So a lot of that has changed. So your willingness to change, uh, go out there and have that mindset. Uh, you know, and that's really what we teach over here. We're doing a lot of training on mindset. Right. As a brokerage, uh, that's something that we are doing. We are differentiating ourselves. Right. A lot of the brokerage, especially in this particular time right now, are not doing a lot of training on mindset. Mm. We've taken a different approach in the last year and a half, two years, and doing a lot of mindset training. But why do you think that's so important to help to be focusing on mindset? Focusing on the mind because you know what? If you don't, uh, if you're not really, your mindset is not there and it's not on a positive attitude. You know, uh, as Napoleon Hill said, PMA, positive mental attitude. Okay. If you don't have that PMA, positive mental attitude, you're not going to get up every day after that. Right. You're yeah. never going to get up. Yeah. Not, even if you do get up, you're not going to get out there and do things. So we give that positive mental attitude training to our uh, realtors that they're out there every day and out there selling. Out there making changes and diff, uh, you know, making a change in people's lives. Yeah. Actually, that's one of the things that we've seen. Uh, today, as you know, um, in your Facebook family, you probably see that we are going to be doing giving back to the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Mm. So that's giving back to the community, giving back to society. So our realtors are not just out there selling and businesses, but we also believe that you have to have a legendary life, a legacy behind. So as a brokerage, we give back to the community. Right, right. And that's how you do it. You have that positive mental attitude. If you have an NMA, what does NMA stand for? Negative mental attitude. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're not going to get up and say, hey, no, you know what? I don't want to get back to the community. Yeah. I don't want to get back to society. So our realtors, our brokers, does a number of these events where we give back. Amazing. At the same time, keeps that positiveness the willingness to get up and say, hey, let's get out and do this. So it's fair to say that you want to be focusing on building a legacy instead of just doing everything for currency. You know what? Legacy can be two things, and depending on your, how you say that. Uh, I look at legacy as like, you want to be remembered after you've left. But don't you want to be remembered while you're alive? I like you? you should be remembered, whoever's out there, you should remember while you're alive. So that's what we're doing, you know. The number seven uh, within Canada, and that's only by the way in the last seven years. Where our brokerage is the youngest brokerage within Century Twenty One. So wow, number okay. seven, top ten, as you can say, and top you know fifteen or top twenty in Canada right. or in the world. Wow. So it's something that you want to be remembered while you're alive. Everyone who says they uh, will remember so and so person while he or she's gone, and it's great. I have nothing, right. nothing wrong with that. But I believe, and as a as a leader of the organization, I. We need to be remembered while we're alive right now so that people can talk about us, not just in the business, but outside of the community itself. Make sense? Deep words. I like it. <laughs> so, Thank you. So you got sales agents coming on, and mm-hmm. mindset is clearly a really important factor to that. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, even if they have the right mindset, there are times where agents have, or salespeople in general, uh, businesses have bad months, bad mm-hmm. weeks, bad days. Mm-hmm. Um, what what strategies or tips can you give to give to professionals that listen? What to overcome or to stay motivated mm-hmm. when they're going through those bad months? Because sometimes you know you'll be working on a deal for weeks, or months, or whatever the case is, and you lost it right at the end, Correct. and that can throw you completely into a slump, regardless of how everything else is going. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's difficult. I've been through it myself, and um, I'm sure you've gone through it, and you've seen sales agents gone through it as well. What what do you call like what tips do you have to keep to tell to, to suggest to people? So, a number of things. First and foremost, I would say is um, first you have to have that desire to go out there and do it. So your desire will be to say, I want to be by this time, I want to be at a certain place. Or so let's say for the month in, in this year, you want to be a centurion producing agent. Centurion producing means you get the golden lady, which we see it standing over there. Right. And some people, you might say, hey, you know what? I might do it in ten months. But you know what? You might have to take a detour and maybe it'll take 11, 12 months sometimes. Mm, okay. Or you may not do it in that time frame. It may be a year from now. 
So in other words, having that desire and setting that desire and saying, hey, I'm going to do whatever it takes. And sometimes it may take you a little longer time, but at the same time, what I found is you have to have a DMP, definite major purpose. Definite major purpose. What, what does that mean? So definite major purpose. What do you want to do in life? What do you see yourself in life? What do you see yourself in a year from now, 12 months from now, uh, 24 months from now, two, three years from now? Where do you see yourself living a legacy? Mm. I see myself and my wife and I, we want to put 200 kids to school in the next five years right. at home in India. Right. So for that, it's a financial burden. You know, for that, I need to get out there. So that's my definite major purpose, putting 200 kids to school back home in India, boy or girl, whatever it is, right. out there. So right. for that, I need to get out of bed every single day. Uh -huh. And the motivation is not just the money over here. The motivation is that definite major purpose, putting 200 kids to school. Would you say that, uh, would you, say that uh, you have to have a purpose beyond money? Or money is just a means to the end? means to the end. Because you can have a lot of money, are you going to be happy? Or you can lose it. I've seen a lot of people not be happy with a lot of money. Exactly. But if you have definite major purpose and say, hey, with that money, I'm going to do something, you want to be a giver than a getter. You know what? There's two types of people that I know now. My dad told me there's two types of hands out there. There's okay. a hand that takes and the hand that gives. So who <laughs> like do you that. want to be? DMP. If you're a DMP, you're going to be that guy, basically. Oh, have a definite major purpose in that. So okay. to go back to what you're saying over here is if you have that definite major purpose, Good days, bad day, good week, bad week, good month, bad month, bad quarter. It's okay because you know what? Your end goal is somewhere else. Mm. It's going to take you time. And you know what? I mean, let's, let's look at some of the legends that we've had in our lifetime over here. Um, Nelson Mandela, mm. in prison for 27 years, but he had a definite major purpose in life is to see freedom and perfect. Let's go back to Gandhi. 1905, he landed in India, and in 1947, that's almost 40 odd years it took for independence. Mm -hmm. But it's that perseverance and persistence, consistency will always win the race. In this business, I believe if you're persistent and consistent, and you have that definite major purpose, that's inconsistent that I got. You don't have to have the money thing. Money will come. You know, um, they say, you know, if you can help, Zig Ziglar actually said this, if you can help as many people achieve their goals, you will achieve your Your goals, goals yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. You're in a financial yeah. business. Yeah. Uh, so the insurance business, yeah. helping with my goals, right. you will get something back. Absolutely. And that's what I find. That's what I tell a lot of my realtors and realtors that are out there listening. Help us with your family. Buy, sell homes. Canada is a beautiful, beautiful place. Beautiful place, in particular Toronto, that if I can help oh, any family buy, get them out of rental, yes, the yeah. business will come. Yeah. So it's just not the money aspect, it's helping people. That's what I feel. And that's what we try to teach. See, we're, we're still a sales organization, still right. a sales technique there, but we've taken a different approach uh, in the last two years. And that's where we've seen uh, our sales being successful, our realtors being successful, and at the end of the day, it's that peace that we're seeing at the same time. Wow. wow, so definitely mindset. You need to have the right mindset, the positive mindset, as well as you need to have determined goals just beyond money. And, you know, a clear way to get to those goals is making sure that you're doing, you're a giver, not a taker. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's, you know, we could have this conversation for days or weeks. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Um, now, you know, tell me something. When, when do you know that sales is for you? When do you know when sales is for you? First and foremost is um, the your willingness to work on your own. If you... Uh, are somebody that cannot be dependent on your own, in other words, uh, and you can't get out there and do things on your own, meaning get out of bed and try right. motivated on your right. own. You know, we have a job. The reason why you get out of a job because you know that if you don't get there by 8, 8, 30 or the latest, you get fired. In this business, no one's going to fire you. Right. You are your own boss. Besides the clients. They might fire <laughs> <They might suck. laughs> How often that? But if you don't have any clients, they're not going to fire you. Isn't that true? <laughs> true. Very true. If you don't have any clients, no one's gonna fire. Yeah, maybe your family might fire, your wife might fire, but that's the only thing. But if you don't have any clients, they're not gonna fire you. Yeah. So you need to have that willingness to say, that, "Yes, I will get out there." And you need to have, you need to be that people person. Uh, people person is out there and make a difference, help people. Uh, you know, it's not just yourself. The willingness to help others. Okay. And I believe the biggest thing is is change. 
Uh, you know, from what you're doing, always change, especially this business. It's not the sales. I, I come from an IT background. I work for yeah. Dell Computers and, uh, and IBM. It's a different side. It's corporate world. This is your money. I'm helping you buy a house, and it's your money that you're buying. It's the biggest investment you're going to make in your lifetime. One of the biggest investments. So there's a lot of intellectual, a lot of uh, emotion goes into this right. process. Different side. That always happens so that even in personal, personally, like if I was to analyze uh, a specific deal for a friend or something of the sort, mm-hmm. I can think through it very logically. But when it's my own deal, <laughs> I'm invested in it emotionally and suddenly the logic part shuts off. <laughs> it's like, you know, like you, you, if you see a friend and, you know, they're, you're telling them, you know, I think you should buy a minivan, you got five kids, this is, this is the car for you. And if I need the same car, I'm going in there looking at the two door sports car going, <laughs> maybe it can work. Maybe I might need to do a lot of back and, back and forth, but maybe I can make this work. Yeah, you know, just an example. But um, it sometimes sucks to get your get to separate the logical and the emotional side, especially when you're invested in the deal itself. So, now, um, you know, you provide tips throughout this whole um, interview. Um, you know, I hope you guys are finding a lot of value in this as I am. Um, you know, to wrap this up, what are some tips you would want to give to sales professionals out there or business owners? Um, you know what? Find out what your what your calling, what your definitely main purpose. You know, getting into business uh, is is easy, basically. And 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 but at the end of the day, why are you getting into business? You know, why you making, you, you're making difference for people. You know, when Henry Ford made the car T Model T, he wanted to see how he can make a better life for others out there, make a difference in the uh, needs for others. When uh, the Wright brothers made the, the airplane, make it easy for the world for traveling. What is it you're getting into business? If you just get into money, uh, uh-uh. you're not going to be in it for a long time, and you're just going to be working you know, seven days a week. Why is it that you're doing mm. uh, Whether it's business, and even in real estate, if you think you just want to get in here because you want to make that uh, few million dollars and get in and get out, it's not that easy, but you need to have a call. So it goes back to your definite major purpose. What exactly is it? So what is your definite major purpose you want? Is it, is, how can people, you know, especially I remember a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. if, if someone was to ask me, you know, back in my early, late teens and early 20s, what was my goal, I would say, I want to just make X amount of money, uh-huh. but they say I want to be a millionaire before 30 was the goal type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because money was the end result for it. And right. that's what you're thinking of that thing. You're always told, even when you have like your parents say, hey, make sure you make a lot of money, be successful, you're mm-hmm. told out of society. But that's usually, like I said earlier, it's a means to an end and you have to actually sit down and, and spend some time and analyze your which why you want why you want all this money because mm-hmm. I've seen you know I was having this discussion with my brother the other day about you know what is the end goal of having X amount of dollars is it is it if, you know for us it, we, my brother and I both decided that it was freedom for me it's freedom to travel the world for him it's uh, freedom to pay, play as much tennis. And uh, that without any time of the day, and for me, it's for me to be able to travel any place of the world. That's what money brings to me. And even again, we can even go deeper than that. But I think I think it's fair to say that we should spend time first in to find out what and why we're doing what we're doing. Absolutely. So freedom for you, uh, absolutely. And that's what you need to do is you can find out what that will be. And you know, that's just the way our blueprint was back then. Our parents said, just make lots of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But I think in the process of that or that journey, enjoy that journey when you get to that million dollar destination which you want. What are you going to do afterwards? Well, after that million dollars, it's not just a two million dollars. You know what I mean? What do you want to do? Maybe give it away. Travel. Um, get back to community, get back to society. Uh, that's that's what I believe the calling is. Okay, yeah. Giving, uh, you know what I mean? Like that's 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 why those those that have made the billions, they believe in giving back. Sure. So sure. when they give back, more will give back. I mean, um, like uh, they say, the the fastest way to grow anything, anything that you have, is gratitude. Give more of that back, and you'll see more come back in. Law of attraction. The more you give, the more you're gonna get back. Uh, so gratitude. Is what it is. So, definite major purpose. Again, what is your end result? And if it's your financial freedom, great. You're going to be traveling. Guess what? When you love more traveling, you're going to go out there and work even harder and say, hey, I want to do more additional deal so I can travel even more next year. Fair enough. Makes sense? That's what it is. Get out there.
Amazing. Right. So um, you provide so, provide so much value, and thank you so much for that. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure people who are watching this may want to reach out to you and mm-hmm. have any questions or want you to maybe need uh, help when you know running some advice, need your advice or anything of the sort. So how can uh, people reach out to you? Well, you can call me. I mean, my my broker is Century Twenty One Innovative Realty. Uh, you can call me at four one six. Uh, 878-1684 is my cell number. Uh, directly give me a call if you're in the real estate business and not so sure how to take it to the next level. We certainly have a number of training within the brokerage. Uh, certainly can discuss that with you. Also, we've got new batches coming in, uh, realtors that we're going to start training uh, in the summer. So that will help you with that. And uh, we have a lot of uh, training um, within the brokerage. And if you're not even with our brokerage, but you would like to attend, you're welcome to do so. Reach out to me uh, or my email, Sabir, S-A-B-B-I-R dot Chihuahua, C-H-A-W-A-L-A, at century21.ca. And uh, I gladly help you to, to take your business to the next level, help you with your business. Or in general, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. Absolutely. You, you even helped me out as well when I needed some tips, uh, especially in present- presentations and, and stuff like that. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, first, you're, he's a really helpful guy. And uh, once again, it's great. thanks so much for joining, joining us over here. And uh, do reach out to him if you have any questions. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to say I really appreciate your time. Would love it if you could subscribe and share this podcast. And also check us out at theinsurers.ca.